good night yesterday slept well not bothered by the mosquitoes ikrisat mosquitoes <laughs> if you are staying here yesterday we had uh, uh four sessions and i would like to get a feedback from you how about uh, these sessions how far they are effective far they are useful and also i would like to know from you what type of uh, topics you would like to include in such a workshop with uh, with this with this theme because so that will be helpful for us because the heterogeneous group i know that uh, the dr rathors abhishek rathors presentation may not be of much interest to many of you uh, but some of you have really enjoyed i know our gentleman who is interested in the genomes <laughs> uh, he is very very much interested in that of course i could see that two or three persons interacting but uh, we have spent more most uh, about uh, more than an hour whether that time is usefully spent for you or not we do not know we would like we would like to get a feedback from you so we will kindly uh, first uh, tell about the topics which we have covered is today and also after that i would like you to help us uh, to know what type of topics you would like to include in such a type of uh, workshop so floor is open for you in a farmer who is said with the ecrisat and he has benefited with the communication technology with the ecrisat at least that sort of experience would be a fan of farmer should have said the experience to us that he has already benefited with the communication technology with icar and ecrisat yesterday i would like to listen rajiv vatsne but uh, it is uh, not possible yesterday if at all we could listen to them they have been fed because of uh, acid interventions we have a field trip tomorrow we will be going to uh, there you will be seeing clearly how acid interventions of ecrisat uh, changed their lives uh, how they have got the development because of the acid study initiation surprise ecrisat we will cover tomorrow that's a right question sir even the lead question for today so if you get look at the entire capacity building program what we actually decide are appropriate technologies and innovative approaches for agriculture knowledge sharing about the technologies we are talking about the approaches and what we are sharing how we can transform the research results various services you have seen data services you have seen information services you have seen education services okay but we are sharing as you rightly mentioned one is the small holder farmers and the others other groups like students faculty members extension agents even whoever interested to enhance their capacities would like to know this particular area last four days you have seen the map these services how they are satisfying the needs of the various stakeholders other than the small holder farmers today is the day you are going to see them okay that's a lead question thank you for asking that one and tomorrow we are going to have a field visit also presentation of avisai kulatur uh,
Abhishek, yeah, what is this one? Like, what is he doing? He is asking that TV uh, percent in the experiment is less than one in the field condition. In farmer's field, no, <coughs> because uh, there is lot of variation soil variation. any kind of experiment. Okay. When you say any kind of experiment, when you are talking about the agriculture, always two factors play a key role, even whatever the experiment you conduct. Biotic factors and the other one is the abiotic factors. We are successful and even being uh, working on this particular area by how we can control these biotic factors. Case of abiotic factors which are out of our control, like uh, changing scenarios like fluctuations in weather and climate. Having said that, we have some models how we can codify the knowledge. I, I'm going to like emerging opportunities to see how even we can bring those conditions to an accurate level. But it requires the calibration of these models. You can have a model, but you need to calibrate that one according to the conditions accuracy. But if you could take an experiment in any way, that's not possible. You need to bring the accuracy. You need to understand that one. Because we're going to see that one also. What kind of... Even I didn't get that one, but based on yesterday's presentation. Yeah. When we talk about e-learning or e-extension, uh, learners is always at distance, you know, due to provide learner support to in the agriculture where a lot of the skill based things are there. But learner support can help them select digital include they have done wonder by inter including the human interface. But when we deliver e-learning content, we again find the problems how we can deliver effectively the learning to the participants or learning. Instructional design, I think they can help instructional design. So I think one of the one lecture or one session we can deliver or we can take about instructional design and designing the content. Because we have to treat different people, so different farmers we have to treat differently, the extensive people we have to give different type of content, the scientists. We cannot give our scientific report to the farmers. We have to modify that report to the farmers. We have to modify the, that report for the extensive people in a different way. So one session, if we can have instruction design, I think that will be the great help. I, I can answer that, uh, Praveen. See, that's a good question. Okay. We are talking about the e-learning and e-extension. And uh, if you look at the group, 35 members are diversified group. We have designed this course in a way that provides them an orientation. Okay. Once you get exposure onto these things, ask for the new knowledge. That's yes. the knowledge provides you an opportunity to dig into the deep. We organize 
an orientation capacity building program or an orientation management systems and an instructional design. As you have done work in these technology mediated, we are talking about that one. Why we are talking about the instructional designing? We are not creating the traditional learning material. We are using the digital code, am I right? When you are digitizing the material, it's an expense. I can take five more minutes and quote an example. Of how this we are talking about the distance learning. If you could look at the U.S. Defense and White House Science and Technology, we use it to provide an orientation and training to their started developing these learning materials. You develop a website. Who are the technocrats here? At the earlier websites, what kind of technology they were using? What, what kind of technology? Java, XML, or HTML? HTML, okay. Those are the combination of HTML pages gives you a website, okay. And but these HTML pages, for example, see, I'm training these soldiers on these new, new machine gun or whatever. It's not like a static one, am I right? It's keep on coming. Next year, they get some new equipment. They receive some kind of distance learning training and take a practical or a hands-on experience. The advantage with the distance learning is they don't need to patient. They can be in their respective places, perform their duty. Sometimes they can be in lifelong learning mode themselves. Okay. If you are providing these HTML pages, imagine you developed a website with that. Add some new material. Okay. I need to reorganize that one. What happens? You need to deal with these. Come up with a new approach and you need to invest your time and money on that one. How many times you do that? That's where the new approaches like instructional technology, what they have done, we should not go positively. And why not we have this semi packaged material where they come up with this learning objects approach. Learning object is nothing but as we discussed are talking about the machine gun or something. That Let's supply the same thing for agriculture. Okay. The worker, he has created the learning materials using the tool. Right, so that's also a tightly packaged material. If you create something in flash, that's a tightly packaged After that, if you could look at the organization, Crop module is there, PGNP. Divided that one into four different sections. Mission practices covers from soil to the evaluation exercises are nothing but not providing them an opportunity to evaluate themselves what they learn, okay? So oh, you want it? Wonderful. <laughs> okay. And in that one, if you could look at that one, that's a tightly packaged material. The difference between the website and the instructional designing. He designed in such a way that delivers a specific instruction, okay? These are in uh, repository in a semi-packaged format. We have some tools. That's like either you can code, otherwise you can use modeling tools. Earlier HTML, we were coding that one. Now we have the tools, Dreamweaver, Microsoft Front Page. And what I'm doing, simply I'm attaching an image that's generating a code. Either way, we have some authoring tool. From my repository, I can simply drag and drop and uh, create a material, okay? So if I have all these learning objects in a repository, if I wanted to create a material for only entomologists, because I'm expecting entomologists, I can only
properly combine the insect pest management by enterprise. I need to add on something that each learning object, the newly created learning object, allows the repository to grow. And in changes in the existing learning object, We start working on these things, introducing them to this group. The idea here is you are meeting with the resource person. to this knowledge sharing to farmers in particular. The other day you were speaking about Swaminathan's foundation taking up some activity. It would have been better if you just have organized a session, organizations taking up these activities. Of I'm sure that you people would have been in touch with many organizations. Friday, December 13th. Today is Friday, am I right? Yes. December 13th. Yes. You look at the session at 9.30. Several sessions tonight is innovation, so we are going to enlist the organization. We are going to discuss that one. Okay. Well, I am happy you are providing these lead questions, okay? Further comments or suggestions that the developer opens that one. So I just uh telling you the other day that we used the uh, computer as a teaching and learning tool way back in uh, uh, mid 80s in the training program and uh, at the time the mainframe was there and then I used the basic language I learned basic language and then developed uh, on the DOS platform so I would like to show you, I mean, my idea is to see how the technology has developed and how we have to move and then learn and then unlearn and the things. See, uh, we can, uh, there is no need to be very fancy about uh, developing this. You can use even Word document. And for example, uh, this was developed uh, when there was a workshop uh, in Manage for the uh, dealers, fertilizer dealers, agrochemical dealers. So we would like to help them to understand that they are selling fertilizers. But if the farmer asks, say the recommendation is uh, for sorghum is uh, 60 kilograms nitrogen per hectare, I come to your uh, shop to buy urea. How much urea I need to apply if it is 60 kilograms of nitrogen? Because always the recommendation is in the form of uh, 
uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Whereas if you go to uh, the shop, it will be urea, uh, calcium ammonium nitrate, or ammonium sulfate. So the area we thought that uh, these dealers also should, I mean, that was the idea of the manage to conduct that uh, training program. So I, I was asked to, and then I developed this uh, simple, frequently asked about fertilizers. I mean, I mean, just I want to show the example. Just I, put, I use the word document, and then what are the, the, the topics which you need to be included, uh, so that you know, the, if the farmer comes to him and he, he can open up and then see from the information and then help the farmer to understand. Uh, for example, uh, let me see. Just a simple hyperlink in Word document. And then you get that information. So just you have the topics so that you know, one can easily retrieve the information about that. So what are the popular fertilizers? What soil conditions decide the suitability or unsuitability of the above? If the farm asks, uh, mine is a black soil, can I use urea or I need to use ammonium sulfate? Or I'm going paddy, uh, rice, and which one I need to use? I mean, the dealers also should be capable of helping the farmers. That was the idea at the time. Uh, and then we uh, gave this information to the dealers. So this is one example. And similarly, uh, farmers uh, also need to know about uh, the uh, soil testing. In case if the farmers ask the agents about the soil testing, uh, we had again uh, a, uh, a module about uh, frequently asked questions about uh, the soil testing. Of course, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to demonstrate to you the different ways of expressing, uh, the, developing the information. You started with a simple Word document. And the same thing can be used in the frequent last fertilizers, uh, uh, frequently, frequently asked questions about soils also. But there are some uh, very good uh, software which are available free to beginning, to begin with for 15 days or 20 days. You can take advantage of that period and develop some of the things. So for example, there is one uh, uh, software called Engage. So just to demonstrate the use of this, I use this uh, Engage. And uh, you give the questions. You give the questions and then there will be a drop down. For example, what equipment is required uh, to take a soil sample? Just show them uh, what type of equipment you need uh, to take a soil sample. This is just uh, a simple English. Very, very sharp, few sentences, there's no essay, just uh, give you the information which is required. But there are uh, so many equipment, but which is the best tool to use uh, uh, a simple uh, auger or even expert. So it is uh, another way of uh, developing uh, a lesson, which may be useful for the farmers, which may be useful even for the agricultural graduates. So this is another uh, uh, way of developing a new learning course or some information to the farmers or to whatever, whoever, whoever. So how deep should samples should, should be taken? And it gives you the how much uh, uh, soil depth we need to consider to take the samples depending upon whether you are going to establish the lawns, or is it a vegetable garden, or is it a field crop, or is it a pastures. So the answers are there. So uh, this way you can uh, help the farmers, or uh, the agents, or the agricultural graduates uh, to know the information. This is another way of uh, putting it. And then later on, uh, yeah, I was telling you that in the initially we tried uh, we did uh, in a very 
using the DAS platform. And of course, we, being a DAS farm, we can't increase the size of the uh, screen. So this part of the lesson is to practice solving problems on calculation of needed combination of a single or a double fertilizer material based on a rate of fertilizer recommendation. Of course, it also, because I use this for uh, in the training program, so when one has to uh, uh, enter the name also, uh, so that now uh, I can, I mean this will uh, uh, develop another file, who has used and what, and what are their responses. In case they have a problem, I used to interact with the trainees. That way this was developed. So a farmer has uh, diammonium phosphate and urea to fertilize his pearl millet crop. How much of these fertilizers are required to supply the recommended rate of 30, 30, 0. So how to calculate that is simply explained in this. Uh, so if you want to solve this problem, press A. Or if you do not know to solve the problem, press Yes for the tutorial. So if I press the uh, Yes, then you get uh, the tutorial. So the recommended rate of nitrogen is 30. And then the fertilizer available is the ammonium phosphate and the Urea. Uh, so how much of diammonium phosphate is required to supply 30 phosphorus? So it, it gives you how to calculate. So this is uh, the way which we developed in the early years. And later on, of course, we uh, went with the developments uh, in the technology. And we used it. Just it is just to show you, I demonstrate to you that there are various possibilities of developing e-learning courses. And then uh, here is uh, one example. For this we have given it, uh, given to the, the village which we are going to visit tomorrow in the kiosk. So this is economically important insect pests of groundnut. And this is a simple PowerPoint presentation. And uh, here is the uh, different uh, types of insects that attack groundnut. So if the farmer comes, we show them. Uh, you have uh, this type of uh, insect, or this type of damage, or this type of insect, or uh, or you have this type of damage, or you get this type of damage. So the farmer can see in the chaos. And then, uh, the, then in case, suppose if the farmer says, yes, I find this type of uh, hose made on the uh, leaf, then uh, what I need to do? So you press this, then you get the uh, information about that damage. So the larvae damage the foliage, uh, uh, similar to tobacco and hair. So the information is that. Uh, what are the symptoms? And uh, so it goes on explaining about. Then how well, the management needs to be done. Crop rotation with sorghum. So it, it says, uh, and also it grow sunflower. For example, here is shown row sunflower as a border or intercrop in groundnut fields to serve as an indicator or trap crop. So the management aspect also will be indicated here so that the kiosk farmer, I mean kiosk operator can help the farmer in case he has, uh, farmer has such a type of uh, uh, problem. So we start with the simple management and then uh, finally go to the number of uh, pheromone trapping, a little more advanced uh, type of uh, uh, controlling the uh, caterpillar. So you can go back and then see the uh, pictures, then uh, uh, just for example, it's a part damage, if it is a crop damage. So you classify the damage also, leaf damage. The farmer will ask them, is it on the leaf or is it on the part or is it on the, as you see the whole crop. So based on that, we can select, so for example, if this is a part damage, then these parts are being uh, damaged by brookets. So how to control that? So we give that uh, in a very simple uh, information, very short and simple. So we provide this. Similarly, we have a one on uh, diseases also. This also was provided on a CD uh, to the kiosk operator. 
and uh, he has used it. If, for example, these are the types of damage which you get from the ground uh, from the uh, fungi or uh, bacteria. Suppose if you have uh, this type of damage, click on that, then it uh, explains the symptoms. Then what the control measures are the man, what we say the management aspects rather than controlling the management aspects. So this way we developed uh, very simple uh, modules which can be useful for the farmer as well as it uh, helps to, to teach also the students very in a simple way. Okay, I'll uh, tell you further. When uh, the other day, uh, I'll take questions later. <laughs> okay, <laughs> because I need to come to you and then listen to you and then answer. <laughs> That's my problem. Okay, uh, later on, as uh, yesterday, uh, I mean the other day, uh, Rosanna Mula was telling that we have a website where we have uh, uh, uploaded some of the. Uh, lessons, online online learning lessons like uh, the Pigeon P or Pearl Miller, you might have seen the other day. She has just shown that but I do not know whether you have opened that website and then looked at uh, the different type of courses which have been uploaded onto that uh, which were mostly developed by me and then it was uploaded. For example, uh, you have uh, on Pigeon P. So this is a little more advanced and then more information uh, in a different way it was uh, expressed. For example, if you look at uh, this is about pigeon pre production practices and pests. This is available on the uh, website and uh, to whom it is meant for. It is meant for farmers, for agri agriculture extension officers, and uh, it is all made from the PowerPoint. It's very simple PowerPoint. Then agriculture students. Gives an introduction to whom it is uh, uh, required, useful. Because I have uh, taken out from, it also is how to go about this course that will help the farmers just to make uh, familiar how the, uh, this module has been uh, developed. I will show you one module. Uh, So in the beginning itself, it says the module one, introduction to PGNP, and uh, what is the ob the learning objectives of this lesson? So it says explain the importance of PGNP, describe the uses of PGNP, recognize the nutritional value of PGNP, and illustrate the growth and development of PGNP plant. So it uh, gives that, and then uh, the module is divided into uh, lessons. There are, uh, say, click the picture to know. The, I mean, we need to involve also the learner. Uh, it's not just uh, looking at uh, the monitor and then going through, but you should make the others, you should make the learner uh, to interact with the computer. Others say uh, she or he may doze and then uh, when I may go to sleep. So make, them, make him active also while going through this uh, lesson. So you pick you click on the picture and you get the lessons here. These are simple hyperlinks that we can use uh, uh, to show this. So lesson one is importance of vision P. Uh, lesson two is this. Lesson three is growth and development. So click on lesson on your choice. Suppose if I click on the lesson three, then it goes to the lesson three, the growth and uh, vision P and development. And uh, what we did is, uh, of course, the learner may already know about the subject. There is no need of uh, uh, wasting time of going through this uh, lesson. 
but make sure that the, the learner knows about the subject. So we give in the first stage itself, uh, it says, do you know the answer? So it helps him, uh, do you know the answer? Click here to test yourself. So, or if you do not know, click here to learn and test your knowledge at the end of the module. Again, at the end of the module, there is a uh, exercise by which the learner can uh, know by himself or herself uh, whether they could un understand the subject matter or not. So suppose if I say I do not, I know about the subject, how you, I know how, to, how the pigeon tree grows and develops. So let me understand myself whether I really know or not. So I get, uh, I'm sorry because the links have broken here because I've taken yesterday night around 10.30 from another uh, uh, computer. So links have broken but links are there which uh, show you that, of course I'll come to that a little later about this. Uh, suppose if you do not know and you want to know, then uh, you get the subject matter shown uh, sli I mean, a screen after a screen and uh, one can learn from this. And then uh, the most important thing in this uh, is as that the other day uh, Dr. Sanjay Chaudhary was asking what that the specification. You can see the specification. It should be a simple format and you picture, uh, as far as possible make it visualize, put pictures, a lot of pictures, uh, but not many pictures on one screen, one or two pictures so that you know, the uh, learner can concentrate on those pictures. If you have too many pictures then it may distract. So just a, a picture and what needs to be seen. And then always uh, the text is uh, related to the picture. Not a fancy thing which we need to put beautiful pictures of, no. no. It should be relevant and it should be a simple picture. And the picture is meant for learning rather than, uh, meant for expressing rather than impressing. So these are the specifications which we can say. So it should be, be expressive. So like this you can go on uh, from slide to slide and then finish the module. And at the end of the module you have an exercise by which one can uh, identify uh, they really could learn or go back again to the lesson to uh, once again and uh, learn and then again a test by himself. And these questions are developed in a um, uh, randomized uh, way so that you no know, the same question uh, and also the these uh, quizzes are in multiple choice format A, B, C, D and A, B, C, D are also uh, randomized so First time it may be, the answer may be A. Second time, the same answer is put in the uh, uh, B uh, choice. So it is again randomized so that it will help the learner to really evaluate the, uh, him, evaluate himself or herself. I will show you the one So here is the, uh, of course this, for this I used, uh, uh, earlier I used only the uh, PowerPoint and developed quizzes. But uh, the problem with PowerPoint is that uh, we will not be able to record the responses of the uh, students or learners. That is the problem. But you can use the PowerPoint and also record, but you need to write a, uh, a, uh, a small script. Uh, using you know a, a software, but uh, the problem is that, that type of script may not be allowed uh, in may in a PowerPoint presentation. So that is a limitation. Is that that's why I used a software called QuizMaker. It's not very expensive, and uh, one can easily I mean an institute can easily buy, and it has got a lot of uh, options uh, that can help you to develop a very good quiz. Uh, so, 
the PGNP is certainly, uh, I'm sorry, I'll let me go back. I'm sorry. I missed a point. Say, you, as you wanted to test your knowledge, because this comes at the end of the lesson. So, uh, as, as you test, wanted to test your knowledge before going through this system, no feedback is given. So, because you, I'm sorry, this is the uh, introduction. At, at the time of introduction, you have this quiz. So, that's why we said, as you wanted to test your knowledge before going through this lesson, no feedback is given for a wrong answer. Because at the end of the lesson, if you take a quiz, you get the feedback. You're wrong, and this is the answer. So, uh, so you will get the score at the end of this. Uh, if the score is less than 90% at the end of the quiz, it will help you to learn from this lesson and test your knowledge once again. So there are six questions in this quiz. So there are six questions in a different type of multiple choice. So See, for example, uh, I don't know whether you observed it, the previous one, the question was different, the first question was different, now the question is different, because it randomizes uh, and picks up from the uh, the pool of six questions. So, PGNP ranks among the cultivated persons in the world, first, third, fourth, second, so if I, I mean, just I will click, click third, or if you, if you want any, anybody would like to say what the answer is? If you are familiar with pigeon P, pigeon P is ranks among the cultivated pulse. What is the rank? Is it uh, second, third among the pulses? Fourth? Okay. Uh, I say if I say second, and then you submit the your choice. Flash player is not. There. Sorry, you pick that. You pick the wrong answer. So you need not be harsh that you are wrong. Yes. You need to be very, you know, I mean, this is another specification, Dr. Chaudhary. Uh, you, your language you use, it should be soft. It's not so, so you're wrong, I'm sorry, no, you're wrong. Uh, you are, yeah, yeah. Uh, some well, the harsh language should not be used. Sorry, you are, uh, you pick the wrong answer. Yes, you have picked your wrong answer. Something like that, you know, that helps you. And then it goes to the next question. Next question comes and then you uh, pick that and then submit. Again, it's a wrong answer. See here, instead of uh, multiple choice, it is a different way of uh, quizzing. Why pigeon pea is preferred crop by poor farmers in the input? You need to select two choices uh, because uh, if pigeon pea is a low input crop uh, because pigeon pea fixes atmospheric nitrogen, farmer say, because pigeon pea is a long duration crop, uh, because yield and so, because of yield stability in pigeon pea, because it gives good fodder to the cattle. So I picked up one and the next one uh, because I say yield. Sorry, you picked up again as the wrong answers. PNP grows under low input conditions because it is a short stated crop. Uh, it is drought resistant legume crop. I mean, I wanted to show you the score. That's why I'm going through these six questions. Uh, it is grown on, say, it is drought resistant legume crop. And then uh, you pick, you submit that. Wait, you know the answer. So encourage him also, encourage the person also, by good words. PGP is traditionally grown only on black soils as an intercrop for fodder during uh, winter season. Uh, or say, if say one, uh, as, a, as an intercrop. So you know the answer. Pigeon pea is annual crop. Pigeon pea is annual crop as well as a perennial crop. I agree. True, I, I agree with the statement. False, I do not agree with the statement. We say pigeon pea is both annual and uh, perennial. 
faith, you know the answer. So here you got the score. So uh, the score is uh, 50% in case of points and also in case of percentage. Thanks for taking this quiz. Give a feedback to the learner. Uh, thanks for taking this quiz. I mean, do not say that uh, no, you you failed or uh, you have not answered properly. You do not know. You you need to learn more. No, just be soft. And uh, thanks for taking this quiz. Viewing this lesson will help you to know more about this subject because the uh, expected score is 90 percent. Your score is 50 percent. So it is better to go through the lesson. So we say it's, you know more about the subject. Uh, please study this lesson and answer the quiz again. So you can you can uh, review the case or you can make a printout. It can be used very well in the uh, universities uh, instead of uh, uh, giving uh, on a paper. Uh, if you have, uh, of course, computers, then it can be, and the same questions will not come uh, to everybody. So it will evaluate by itself, and at the end you get a, a printout. Uh, so your time also is saved. So that way it can be, uh, it's a very useful uh, exercise. Can so this is how we have uh, developed uh, some of these lessons and which are available on ECOSAT uh, website as uh, uh, Dr. Rosanna Mula was telling the other day. And of course, uh, further, I mean, it's a question of learning and relearning and unlearning uh, in developing these questions. Then nothing is perfect, nothing is uh, uh, the right one, nothing is wrong one. You need to be, the, uh, the, the ultimate objective of the lesson is that uh, not to show your excellence, not to show your knowledge, but uh, the objective of the lesson is that the learners learn. That's the important. So whenever you develop any learning course, keep that in your mind rather than expressing yourself or impressing yourself. But the ultimate idea is that learners learn. That's important. So what I we did, I know you can build on scenarios also, especially with the farmers. Uh, you can build scenarios instead of uh, just giving the text and then pictures. Uh, you put some. Yeah, as a doc, now we research researchers uh, keeping the human face in mind. So the human faces will help, you know, in in, in case of uh, developing the so uh, the e-learning courses. Put some scenarios. A, a student asking the teacher two pictures, and it can be on voiceover or it can be a video. It can be anything. But uh, if you want to be simple, just put a teacher and a student, and the student asks a question, the teacher answers. Then click that, then you get the answer. Like that, you build scenarios in uh, developing the e-learning courses. I'll show you one example. Uh, I mean, again. Uh, I have learned this after a, I'm sorry. Okay, let us uh, time up. Uh, yeah. Why not we take some questions back to the worker in the next slide? This is on uh, uh, partnerships. So what I did, Then you can uh, put all the uh, buttons uh, which help uh, in navigating the course here. And you can see this is a units menu. This is a lessons menu. 
and this is the unit one, and this is the lesson one, and this is the title of the. Uh, so uh, you can use uh, in such a way the screen that uh, uh, it will be easy for the learner to uh, navigate through the lesson. Can we take some questions? Can, can we take some questions? Yeah, I, I'll show you one thing. How the scenario is developed so that no uh, date one I'll take. Uh, okay, let me. I don't know where it is. Uh, okay, let me take the question. Then I will come into the web. I mean, what I did that is I put uh, the pictures of uh, three persons discussing the same topic, same topic, as if they are discussing and then at the end that discussion will give you the uh, information about that particular aspect. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, thank you. In fact, my, my, uh, you mentioned several times, you know, learners. Uh, this computer-based um, developed and intended to uh, Okay, both, for both, for both. I mean, we have developed for different uh, uh, users. Some of these are for uh, the farmers, some of them are for the students, and some of them are just uh, scientists. For example, the, uh, the, uh, the module on uh, uh, participation has a, uh, what is that? Um, partnerships on partnerships, how you need to develop partnerships, what are the implications involved, because that is mainly meant for the scientists or whoever would like to you know, develop a network of uh, uh, people, I mean scientists or the institutions, then who has the leader, how to, what is, what are the uh, good aspects of the leader. Some of these things are meant for, so it depends on from whom, for whom you are, you can develop for the farmer, you can develop for the extension workers, okay, for the students. We tried all, uh, yeah. Right. So how do you change? Yeah, you can, I mean, it's only where they, so for example, uh, when you are talking about the farmers, about uh, the brookage, you say brookage or in the local language. Whereas if you are developing for an agricultural student or for the scientist, you can use the scientific names also. But we don't use the scientific names, which are not required in case of farmers or in case of some of the extension workers also. So it depends, you know. As well as, well, I mean, you need to think about it. This man is meant for the scientist, so how I can what what type of information I need to put it? I mean, it is not one. It is not one for everybody. No, 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 not definitely. That's what I said. When we develop these modules on uh, partnerships, that is mainly meant for the scientists, not for uh, the students or for the farmers. Okay. Any other question? Yes, sir. Uh, sir. Um, uh, I'm sure that uh, developing uh, the experience of the research, um, how many flash animation and doing that stuff? Uh, one percent, that is me. All that was developed by me sitting in, uh, before the computer, and uh, I have not taken anybody's help. I mean, there is no need also. There is no need. It's, uh, I mean, you need to develop the skill, that's all. But all that was developed by me, as you said, yes, it takes a lot of time. No doubt about it. For example, the Pigeon P1, or which one, which are uploaded on that, uh, I, it, for uh, one Pigeon P course module, it took about three to four months for me. I mean, no, no help. Everything is the uh, scientific information is uh, from my brain or from the books. The uh, technology aspect is also there. 
uh, but if you have a team, because that is the best, but the expense will be expensive. I mean, actually, uh, sorry, uh, there is a presentation itself about the instructional designing. The best thing is you, you have a subject matter expert, you have an editor, so subject matter expert gives you the information or the text information, the editor will edit and give it to the instructional designer. Instructional designer will design how the module need to be developed. And the instructional designer will take the help of a, a graphic expert or a, the photographic expert who can provide you the, uh, the instructional designer is the hub. These are all the spokes, okay? And uh, the graphic or the computer expert will interact with the instructional designer and finally the module is will be developed. And then once the module is developed, go back to the subject matter expert and then check with him for the, the correctness of the information, the way it is uh, expressed, etc. Okay, once it is over, then uh, it will be uh, given to the authorities. The authorities will approve that for uploading. This is uh, in, a re, in, in, a, in a very uh, uh, scientific way you can do the instruction. The same main person who develops the modules is the instructional designer. So I was the instructional designer, I was the subject matter expert, I was the uh, computer expert, I was the so uh, graphic uh, person also. You can develop, there is no problem. There is, uh, it's a question of time, that's all. Yeah. If, uh, if all of them are there, the time can be reduced. But yes, it is, uh, it is uh, time consuming, time consuming, no doubt about it. Yeah, did you look at Praveen? You have asked a question. I hope at least you got a flavor though it's not a full picture, okay? We will continue our discussion.